What's up, guys? Welcome to Sports Spectrum. Today on the show, I'm really excited for our conversation with longtime NBA player Antonio Daniels and his wife, Sonia. They join us here on the show today. We talk about Antonio's NBA career, about the broadcasting that he's doing today, and certainly about his marriage to Sonia. And we talk to Sonia about what it's like to be a wife of an NBA player, how they met, and then the center of their life being their faith, their faith in Jesus Christ. So this is a fun conversation with the NBA playoffs hot and heavy. I'll just say that. It's a good time to talk to a former NBA player in Antonio Daniels and his wife, Sonia. It's coming up in just a moment here on Sports Spectrum. First, I just want to thank you guys for all of the support and the views and the clicks and the likes and the shares and the retweets and all of the great things that you've done in sharing Sports Spectrum's content. I don't know if you know this, but all of our content now for the Sports Spectrum podcast is on our YouTube channel. You can watch every single podcast video on the YouTube channel. So it's really cool. We also have our podcast, of course, everywhere you can listen. Podcasts on Apple and Spotify and Amazon and iHeartMedia everywhere, including our website, sportspectrum.com. But our video content, we've really upped the ante, if you will, in 2024. And you can watch our podcast now on Spotify, but also on our YouTube channel, which is really growing and we're just grateful. So if you want to go subscribe at the YouTube channel, just search Sports Spectrum. You can watch all of our content there. There's a bunch of videos there and really archived content that goes back many, many years can check out Sports Spectrum on our YouTube channel. And of course, all of our content can be found at sportspectrum.com. He is Antonio Daniels, longtime NBA player, now a broadcaster with Bally doing the New Orleans Pelicans games and broadcasts and his wife Sonia is here as well Antonio Daniels and Sonia Daniels welcome to Sports Spectrum how are you guys doing great thank you thank you for having us Jason this is this is awesome excited it, very excited good I'm glad I'm glad you guys are this is going to be a lot of fun it's it's interesting Antonio just to give the listeners a peek behind the curtain we don't normally have a husband and wife duo join us usually it's we're calling the player the, the former player the coach the former coach whatever it might be to join us and you were the one that suggested having Sonia be here part of this and I thought this is awesome because we have a lot of people who listen but we have a lot of marriages that are a part of our listening audience certainly I'm a I'm a married guy mm -hmm. so I kind of like having the two of you together as opposed to just Antonio and it gives us a different perspective so let me start with this we always start with Jesus because I think that's where we should always sure. be centered around For sure. so let's start with Christ in the life of Antonio and Sonia I'll let either of you uh, begin the conversation here and share about Christ in your life. As far as where we are now, yeah, there's nothing more important. What is he like? Who is he right now? There, there, there's, there's nothing more important. You know, it, it's amazing because I remember and I can recall what our marriage was like without him. You know, and I can remember and now I know what our marriage is like with him. You know, th there's so many people that guilty that have called themselves Christians by by mouth, but weren't living a Christ-like lifestyle. And, and that's, yeah. the, that's the thing that I had to grow to learn, and I'm still growing to learn. Um, I don't have it all figured out, but I know that with him and with her, and I've seen the transformation in our marriage. I've seen the transformation in our family. I've seen the transformation in our friendship. I've seen the transformation in our parenting. Um, every aspect of life is different. And again, this is not to say that as a married couple who Christ is the center of our home and the center of our marriage, we have it all figured out. Right, I was just going to say that. Because we don't. <laughs> having, Christ, we. <laughs> right, having Christ centered in our life is the best decision we've ever made. Right. You know, like we say, there are no perfect marriages, even being Christians, even putting God first in our lives. So I can't imagine not having him in your life and trying to succeed in marriage. It's very, and trying to succeed in marriage with an MBA uh, lifestyle that uh, accompanied our, our marriage. So it's very difficult, but you know, 
We are works in progress. We don't have it all together. We're still learning. And I think we'll be learning till the day we die, you know, but um, just having God and having that relationship with him daily, dying to self and following Christ is the best decision we've ever made as a couple and individually. I, I tell you, dying to self daily yeah. is hard. It's hard. We were just talking about that, right. how and, difficult and, it is. Right. And, and that's the thing is, I, I feel like one of the reasons that I didn't want to do this by myself and that I wanted my wife to join us is because I feel like there are so many married couples that need to hear um, vulnerability, that need to hear a journey, that need to know that they're not alone. Like if you mm. are a Christian couple that is dealing with certain issues, that you're not the only Christian couple that's dealing with it. You know, I, I think the enemy's great at isolating us, making her feel like, well, you know what? We're, we're the, the only, only right. We're the only couple that's dealing with this. Or I'm the only man that's dealing with this. Or I'm the only woman that's dealing with that. You know, when you can, when we can be vulnerable in what we've gone through and be honest with what we've gone through, not just with each other, but with, other couples that may be going through something similar to what we've gone through and can inspire them. It's all worth it. It's all about bringing yeah. people to Jesus. That's all. Yeah, I would agree. Um, that's why we're doing this show, Antonio and Sonia. So let me go back a little bit. You guys met, I believe, 2002. We're going to get to that story and kind of then the moment that Christ really started to become central to both of your lives. But Antonio, you said you would have maybe called yourself a Christian. So who am I talking to in 1999 when I'm talking to Antonio Daniels and he's winning an NBA title with the Spurs? Who's that guy as far as faith goes? I, I this, this would have to go back prior to 1999 for me because I had a different perception of God. I had a different perception of father as a whole. And I, I've had different pastors before tell me a lot of times what we do is we shape our heavenly father in the realm that we see our earthly father in. And I, my earthly father wasn't present. I didn't have a relationship with my earthly father. Um, I, I've gone through different things in my life that made me question God, that really made me question God. I lost at the time the most important person and the closest person in my life, which is my older brother. When I was 20, he was 21 years old. Um, and playing basketball at the University of Dayton, I was at Bowling Green, he, he passed. And I was angry at God, angry at God for a long, a long time. I still knew God existed. I still believed in the higher power, but I think there's a difference between knowing God exists knowing that there's a higher power and actually serving him and give him what he deserves. And it took me a long, long, long time to grasp that concept. Hmm. So what was the, con what was the change? Like when did it begin to change? And maybe Sonia had something to do with that, but when did it begin to change? I I'm going to tell you when it began to change and I'm being, and I'm being completely honest and vulnerable here is probably about two years ago. Probably about two mm. years ago. And you know what really brought a change for me is Sonia taught me the meaning of forgiveness. She did. And, you know, in, 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 in scripture, it says, you know, if you want forgiveness, you must give forgiveness. I oh, had yeah. the biggest grudge and held the biggest grudge against my father for the longest time for the longest time. And I used to always kind of, as an excuse, say, I just used it for motivation to accomplish different things in life. I'm gonna show him, I'm gonna show him. And inside, I was, I didn't, I never forgave him. And I didn't learn what the meaning of forgiveness was until I was forgiven. Hmm. And then once I was forgiven, that, that changed my, my perception of, that changed my perception of everything. And yeah. that's why, that's why I know what scripture tells us. We're not supposed to look at man because man will fail us. I'm not looking at man. I'm looking at my wife. And this is my inspiration now to, to grow, to become better, 
to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better man, to be a better follower, to be a better leader. And she showed me the meaning. She lived it out. I've seen a lot of Christians that, that speak a certain way and live a certain way. And when she spoke a certain way and then lived it out to me, that changed everything for me. Hmm. Sonia, you guys don't know this. I think I, I might have alluded it to you, Antonio, when we first, before we even hit record, but I grew up without a dad present in my life. I struggled with forgiveness and actually wrote a book called Live to Forgive mm. about my struggle to forgive mm. my dad. Um, this is speaking to me when you guys mentioned this. And again, we didn't talk about this beforehand, um, but I want to go there a little bit with you, Sonia. How was that as you enter into the dynamics of Antonio being an NBA player, but also a, a person who struggled with forgiveness, lost obviously a brother, lost, you know, had, didn't have a father in his life, hanging on to some bitterness, it sounds like, right. which is very similar to my life. And I think about my wife and walking into what I call the mess of my, yeah. of my journey yeah. with my family. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like for you to kind of enter into this well, fray with him? Entering into uh, the relationship, I always found it difficult for him um, because I was raised with both my parents, you know, and we would forgive each other. It was not a big deal. We weren't grudge holders. It's like one day we were angry with each other. And then like an hour later, it's like, well, what are we eating for dinner? You know, so it's just like, <laughs> we're over it. We just let it all out and we're over it. But yeah. Antonio processed things differently. And he was, he's an internal processor. Like he, he dwells on certain things. He's not saying that he's thinking about it, but it's inside. There's stuff going on. And it wasn't until um, in our marriage, you know, we, we started going to church together around 2010, you know, with the NBA lifestyle. It was just one of those things where it was like, you know what, this is not going to work. And in, we were signature away from divorce. Um, but mm -hmm. for some reason, if we both were feeling, you know, that God was like, pump the brakes here. You know, I'm not done with your story yet. So then we decided that we were going to start going to church and we we're going to go all in. And it's one thing to say that you're going all in with Christ and, and really, really doing it. Right. And it's really difficult. Like you say, when you have unforgiveness in you, you, there's certain areas in your heart that you don't even know that are there. And it's an unforgiveness towards somebody that you thought maybe you did forgive them already, but there's something lingering in that heart. And it's not until you truly give your entire heart to God because things will continue to build up on that unforgiveness. And you you say that you're a Christian, you're going through the motions, you're going to church, you're doing everything, you're even talking like a Christian, but there are certain things that the enemy will use that are way deep in your heart um, that you don't even know why it is that you can't change the situation that you're in, why you can't stop having the same thoughts that you have, why you see things and it's just, why can't I change? Because there are certain there's something still there that you need to completely surrender to God. So I think we, we were going to church together. We were serving God, um, but there was still something some missing. areas, something missing. Lives, you know, that kept coming up and kept coming up. And it wasn't until about like two years ago where it was just like, you know what, this something has to change. change. And vulnerability in marriage is so sure. important because it's like you can hide from me for all these years, but you're never going to hide from God. And unless you want true healing, you have to confess your sins. He says, when you confess your sins to God, he will forgive you. Yeah, when you confess yeah. your sins to one another, to, to somebody that you trust, then you will be healed. And so you want to be healed and forgiven. You don't want to just be forgiven. You want to be truly healed. And I think the importance uh, to have a healthy marriage is to be completely vulnerable with each other. And, you know. You know, it's funny because... We were talking yesterday. Every morning we, we get up and we go to our table and we do our prayer and devotion. And then after reading our prayer and devotion or after reading our devotion, we share with each other. Okay, well, how did that speak to you and how did that speak to you? And we were talking yesterday about the enemy. And one of the things that he's great at is dividing and cutting off communication. Yes, That's one of yes. his big things is to cut off communication. So when you think about when you and your wife or your spouse are going through something, it always starts with like the silent truth. You know, they text you. I'm not going to text back. Or the, the communication just becomes very, very um, few and far between. And that's one of the tactics of the enemy. And 
what she's saying, I believe in any marriage, any marriage, any relationship as a whole, the most difficult thing to do is to communicate. To communicate honestly. Like you Absolutely. can have Absolutely. you can have small surface talk. How was your day? Oh, my day was great. Blah, blah. I'm talking about in-depth, vulnerable. Um, look, this is me. <laughs> this is me this type of I communication. Struggling. Right. This is what I struggle with. Um, this is what I love. This is what I'm passionate about. Um, this is what I need you to hear. That type of communication. I feel like that's empty and missing in a lot of marriages. So if that's missing, then how well do you really know the person that you're married to? Wow. That's really good. Um, what did you, what did you feel Antonio or what did you see when you were able to, it sounds like two years ago was a moment of forgiveness for you too. Mm. What, what did you see when you realized, Hey, God commands us to forgive. I want to forgive, but then you're actually doing it. What did you, what did you see in your life? I, like for me, and I, and I tell my babe this all the time, it, it comes to a point where Bible scripture starts to come to life. For you. And, and again, it, it's growth is in spiritual growth is in linear. It, it happens to different people at different times. You know, for Paul, who was Saul, his came like that. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm no longer going to do the things that I was doing. And, you know, Jesus may touch a, a blind man and scales may fall off. But there are other people where it actually took time. Where it didn't, it wasn't like a miracle that just happened right off the jump. And for me, it was more of a, of a way of seeing my wife, a way of seeing our marriage, a way of seeing my family. Where it's like every day it's just like scales are falling off and you're not just physically beautiful to me. It's so much more than that. It's so much more than just physical beauty. It, it's like a... um I want to honor you. You know, I want to cherish you. Because if I'm honoring him, I'm cherishing you, then I'm honoring and I'm cherishing him and my relationship with him. So now I just, I view her differently. I see her differently. I tell her all the time, it's like God is just, it's not like he took all the scales off at once. But it's like every day, it's just like he's he's touching me and he's, he's scales are just slowly but surely falling off. And I'm just seeing this this love, it's, it's different. It's deeper. Mm. Yeah. Sonia, tell me about those early years. You know, when you, when you meet him, he's an NBA player established in the NBA four years, four seasons, something like that. And, you know, what was that like entering into this NBA world? Um, you know, we've heard the horror stories. We've heard how marriages and pro sports can be so difficult and, you know, the stats are, are there. How was that in those early years for you and him? Well, at the beginning, of course, it's amazing. It's like a whirlwind of, wow, we get to go here and do this. So it's, it's, it's different. It's like, wow, yeah. we get to go grocery shopping. We don't have to follow a grocery list. Let's just get whatever you want. Groceries. <laughs> like all things. Is that we're exciting, you know? Yeah. Um, no, in all honesty, it was, it was, <laughs> it was fun. It was great. And then, um, and then reality is like, a couple of years in, it's just like you start to see, you know, all the temptations and distractions that every yeah. every player goes through. Um, I was a very naive too at the time. You know, I was very young, and um, I, I think you know it was just I I didn't put too much into it. I think I had my own distractions. I had my own materialism that I was like, you know following, you know, the wives and we go by this and we go here and we do that. So it is funny how we talk about now that the, that the enemy puts distractions to divide as well. It's like there's distractions, um, temptations. And so like, let me have Sonia over here caught up in this and I'll have Antonio over here caught up in that. Let's see how long that lasts. And honestly, at the rate we were going, it wasn't going to last until God intervened. And I was raised in church. So I knew the things of the Lord 
before I married him, you know, I grew up in church and we were actually practicing Christians. Like we went to church Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And of course, as you, you get older, you become an adult, you start, you know, doing your own thing and then you get caught up in this life. And I, you know, I still prayed. I still, I had my, my devotional time with God, but it was not, it was very surface and surface only gets you so far, but it wasn't until there was a point where we were separated and we were going to get divorced where I started to, you know what, this just, I need something, just my heart needs something. And I started going to church and, and I love that God is so faithful that, you know, we could run from him, you know, but he never runs from us. And it's, he's not like us, like, Oh, now you want to come and talk to me. Oh, now, now you need my help. What do you need? He's not that way. And I'm thankful that he is, and, and he's merciful, and, and he's loving, and he's the only one that can fulfill the void, because we both had voids in our mm-hmm. hearts. So I felt like filling it in with things I never had before was going to fulfill me, and it didn't. And and he, the other way around, um, did it his way, what he thought would fulfill him, and it, and it never did. And so um, God was working in me changing my mindset and um, slowly working in him as well. Um, but I'm thankful that, you know, going to church and and feeling that, you know what, maybe this is not over yet. Maybe if we can do it differently, you know, and go all in with God, then, then he can change things. And, and he did, he, he, uh, Antonio was, was ready to give his life as well. And, um, and, and we did, we, we started going to church together and it helped. However, like we said, true surrender and completely giving yourself is 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 the next step. Yeah, Antonio, I, I'm just curious from your perspective as having played in the NBA for a decade or a little bit more than a decade, and then coming into this post playing career, you jump into. I was just going to ask you the, the the sort of adjustment because it sounds like there was a lot going on between your marriage, and then also people forget how difficult it is for professional athletes to suddenly at 30 something years old, say you can't do something now that that you've been doing since you were a little kid. You you know, um, yesterday we were sitting at the table. It was me and my babe. And we had one of our daughters is at Baylor. Our oldest daughter's at Baylor and our middle child, Jordan is 13. And our, our little boy, AJ is five. So yesterday we were eating dinner at the table and we have this little box that has questions in it. So while we were eating, we asked each other questions to kind of get each other to open up and laugh. One of the questions that, that Jordan asked me yesterday, she said, um, Dad, what's the most difficult thing you've ever done? Right? Mm. And I told her first was giving my life to Christ. It's the hardest thing I've ever done because you have to die to yourself daily. You know, you yeah. have to die to yourself daily. And if I was to answer number two, number two would be retiring. Because mm. you think about I had played basketball from since I was six and I retired when I was 36 or 37. So I was a basketball player basically for 31 years of my life. Now I think about it in, in, in this aspect though, can you think of another occupation that spans over 30 years that starts when you're that young, you can be a doctor, you become a doctor, but you become a doctor when you're 30 and then maybe you retire when you're 66. Or you become a doctor when you're 40. And maybe you retire when you're 76. I'm talking about an occupation that starts when you're six or seven years old. And then you're done when you're 36 or 37 years old. The issue that I had, and I, talk, I still talk to guys about this now, is basketball should be. It's not who you are. It's what you do. And sure. what people do is they define themselves by what they do. What you do is temporary. That's temporary. Who you are is who you are. That's permanent. And I've always defined myself as a basketball player. Talk to an NBA basketball player. He'd be one of the most confident people that you ever talk to in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. People love to say that. I just love saying that. What do you do? <laughs> I'm an NBA basketball player. <laughs> but now when that's taken away, who are you? And when that got taken away from me, even though that's all, not all I know, but a big part of my life and what I know, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I had yeah. no idea what to do. I, I, I tell guys now all the time, that basketball, that ball's going to stop bouncing. 
that ball is going to stop bouncing. It is not going to bounce forever. And if you don't have a foundation in place, like really somewhere where you really can say, you know what, I can put this away because I'm not defined by this. I'm defined by him. It's going to be a, it's going to be a rough transition. It's going to be a really, really rough transition that can take you to some dark places. And I'm speaking from experience. Hmm. Sonia, what was that like watching him go through that post-playing adjustment, the pivot, if you will? Well, I think he, he really tried to find himself in other, in other areas. Mm -hmm. And that was difficult because, you know, when you're doing something for so long and you're really good at it and you try something different, it's just, a, I don't know if I like this. It was a lot of, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is what I want to do. Uh, but I think he, to me, he seemed to handle it well. On the outside. On, on the outside. Externally. And he really didn't talk about it much. So it, from what I saw, I thought he was dealing with it pretty well. And inside mm. I no, wasn't. he wasn't. I wasn't. And, yeah. and again, this is why communication is so incredibly important. Because if there's one thing that we can do as men, if there's one thing we can do as men, it's harbor things. It is harbor things. Yeah. That, that's what they, oh, yeah. You think about it. That's, this is what we've been taught. This is what we've been taught from the moment that we were boys. Don't cry. Don't express yourself. Don't, hey, look, you better pick your chin up and you deal with it. That's what we've been taught. So that's what yeah. I did. You know, I basically pick my head up. I move forward. Externally, you're smiling. You're happy. Internally, you're dying inside. You are dying inside. Again, that void that she just spoke of, is, something has to fill it. Something has to fill it. If you don't have a foundation in place, because the thing is, something is going to fill it. Something is going to. It's either going to be, yes. you, you have so many different directions you can go, you know? And for me, I was going this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction. And God is just sitting here waiting. He's just sitting there waiting. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm here when you want me. I can help you. Right. I can help you. I'm here when you need yeah. me. And you try yeah. this, and you try this, and you try this, and you try this. Until you get to a point where it's just, like, right. I can't do this. Right. Like I, I can't, I can't do this any other way. Yeah. When, cause you're in this, you're in this really interesting space, if you will, in the NBA. And now you're a guy who's been out of the game for enough years, but you're still in broadcasting and you're still around it and you're still around players. You even mentioned talking to guys sometimes. What are you seeing? And I'll let you both answer this too, on the state of faith and even marriage in some cases in the current NBA culture, Antonio? It's very similar to me than how it was when, when I played. Very similar. Um, you have different guys who, and the thing is, I don't know the extent because guys are great at hiding things. Guys right. are great at hiding things. So you can, you can sit and have, lunch with somebody or have dinner with somebody and you guys can sit there and talk about. And, and I feel like now God is preparing me for something bigger than broadcasting. He's preparing us for something bigger than the media. world. You know, mm. as far as inspiring other couples or other singles that will eventually become couples, right? I have different guys now that are asking me for spiritual advice. Now, as opposed to asking me for, hey, look, I want to work on my game. And, you know, how do I, my jump shot? No, no, no. Like, again, our calling is bigger. Our calling is bigger. And I feel like my calling is bigger. Our calling is bigger collectively as a, as a couple. And it's not sports related. Sports is just a tool. Mm -hmm. It's just a tool. If you would ask me the difference between when Antonio played and now, there's so much more. There's so much more money. There's so much oh, more yeah. temptation. I mean, yeah. you go to the games and you see women like, whoa, you're not even waiting till later on tonight to put that on. You're like actually coming to the game looking like that. So for mm. men, I mean, I don't know how their wives are, but for, for them, I just feel like there's just so much more that the enemy offers them. So they need so much more guidance mm -hmm. and, and, if we could do it over again, I know that one thing that we would have wanted was to build our marriage from the get go, from the beginning on Christ, because things would have been so much different. We would have avoided so much hurt and pain. 
But I love that God uses hurt and pain for a purpose. So sometimes you have to go through things that if I, I wouldn't have chosen it for myself, but because it was part of the plan of my life, I know that I can give it to God and he can use it for something so much more beautiful to talk to these people that are going through things, but on a higher level, like with more excess. Um, just like, you know what, if I was you, this is what I would do. I would give my life to Christ. I would build my relationship with my husband. I would be vulnerable. I would ask him these questions. All the materialism is never going to fulfill you. I'll tell you that right now. All the cars, all the houses, all of that is, is temporary. temporary. And it's a temporary yeah. fulfillment. Like, oh, this is great. And then it's like, oh, okay. Next, you're looking on to the next thing. But having a relationship with Christ and having a, a, a strong relationship with your husband where you guys can actually pray together. And I know that that was a little uncomfortable for us at first, but I'll tell you what, yeah. you can't be mad with your spouse. You can't like stop talking to them and pray for them at the same time. There's something, <laughs> uh, there's a change of heart that's going to happen immediately when you start praying. Maybe you don't want to pray at first, but then it's just like, you know what? The enemy is not going to win. You know, we are, we are bound together and God is with us. And, you know, this argument that we've just had, you know, let's just move past it. It's there's bigger and better things ahead for us. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for, for change. And when you start seeing change in your spouse and the way he talks to you and the way he opens up to you and the way he's handling and doing things, it's just a testament of who God is and that there's nothing impossible for him to do. And I know that a lot of times we can think like there is no way that God can salvage this. There is no way that I am able to move past this pain or, or what has happened. There's no way, but God with all things, you know, all things are possible with God. If we completely surrender our lives to him, there is nothing that he cannot do. So and, and I, and I, I'll tell yeah. you this, like that's where, where she says, like, there's no way we can get past this. And, the enemy's great at, at something else too, because even when you are doing things the right way, right? The enemy's great at rehashing the past. He's great at reminding you who you were, what you've done that's wrong. And, you know, scripture said there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. That's right. And that's easier said than done. And again, I'm speaking from a place of experience here of sometimes. This the shame that you have for things that you've done, who you were, who I was, what I have walked her through. It's um, it's tough. It, it's yeah. really like even even you know I, we were talking about this yesterday. Every decision that we make has consequences, for sure. no matter what, and um. It's tough just to continue to constantly keep your eyes forward and move forward. There's nothing, there's nothing healthy in the rear view. The only thing that's healthy in the rear view is for God to remind you how far you've come. But the enemy does yeah. a great job at trying to rehash the past and deflect you and distract you from what God's true intention and what God's true plan is. He definitely wants you to stay stuck in the right. past so that way your future is stuck. Compromised. Yeah, it's compromised. Um, and that's what he does. He's a father of lies. He's going to continue to lie to you. Um, but like we, we talk about, you know, that's why we have the word of God to battle the lies that the enemy brings. Like, you know what, we, we are a new creation, you know, the old is past and new has come and, you know, just continuing to look forward to what's ahead, you know, and taking off the things that easily entangle us, removing all those things from our lives that would trip us up. And just staying focused on the road ahead. And the thing is, it's like we can't be looking to other people. We have to look to the only one that is perfect. You look to the side and a couple will look like, man, they're doing great. You know, oh, look at them. They're doing great. But you know what? Just keep your eyes focused on God because everybody's going to fail. We, we are going to fail tomorrow. But the thing about it is when you fall down, you get right back up. It's God's right hand that sustains us and continues to um, take us forward. And, and I know he's got great plans for our lives. And the enemy, the enemy knows that too, which is why he tries to so keep us stuck. But that's not. Mm. Well, thank God for His grace. Yes. Like seriously, yes. I hear your guys' story. I hear, you know, so many other stories of people that I've talked to. Even my life. I mean, I'm just that word. Grace is is unmerited. It's undeserving, but it's 
but I receive it. Like yes, it's beautiful to watch it in your life too. Yeah. That's good. Let me, let me finish with this. I know we had talked about the foundation uh, that the Daniels family is founded on sort of the moniker of the Daniels family foundation. Antonio, can you share with us as we close, like just how, how that's kind of manifested itself and taken shape over these past few years, especially we haven't even talked about parenting really. Right. And you know, right. that's you a whole just mentioned podcast. you got, a yeah, you got a podcast. middle school you girl, an adult, and you got a, a teen and a toddler. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you yes. are in it on yeah. every level, yes. on every yes. level. Um, but let's talk about that that family foundation. Well, that our it's called the Daniels Family Foundation, and when people hear it, and people are always asking me, "How can I donate to the Daniels Family Foundation?" It's not a nonprofit. Basically, what it is, like you said, it's a moniker of what our the foundation that our family stands on, with its faith, family, and fitness. Those are the three things that we are extremely serious about. In our family, it's faith, family, and fitness. And you know, we've had a basketball camp now for twenty. This will be twenty second year. This will be the twenty second year, and our basketball camp has transitioned from where we started to where we are now. As opposed to it simply being a basketball camp, it is a basketball slash life slash Jesus camp. We open every camp with prayer. We close every camp with prayer, and we give kids something that. When you walk out that door, that you'll remember. I'm not talking about dribble with your right hand, dribble with your left hand, because there's so many parallels between life and sports. And mm. we try and bring kids and parents, like you wouldn't believe how many parents, after we open with the word of the day and prayer, how many parents come to us ap- after our word of the day and after our prayer in tears, just in tears. Like, you know what, your prayer or your word of the day spoke to me today. Or whatever it may be. And basically, that these are the things that we stand on. Not just us, but our children. Right? We want them to understand how important it is for God to be first. For God to live in your heart. That when people see you, they see God's light in you. You know, that's the faith part. And then the family part is, is us. Mm. It's us. We come from completely different family dynamics. She has a bigger family. I have a smaller family. And then the fitness part, we're big on that. We always have been. You know, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm in just as good a shape as I was when I played, you know? So those are yeah. the things that, that we stand on as a couple. Those are the things that our family stands on. That's the moniker of our family. The Nando Foundation is built and based on faith, family, and fitness. Nice. Sonia, anything you want to add as we close, give you the final word here? Uh, no, I'm just really thankful that we were able to come out on this podcast with you. Um, it's great to, you know, to uh, sit here next to my, to my babe here and just share and point people to, to Jesus because without him, we wouldn't be here. And um, I'm just very thankful that you're doing yeah. the thing, pointing others to Christ. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm excited for both of you because I liked, I heard what you said, Antonio. God's got bigger plans outside of broadcasting and I can already see it. Like I, I see you guys on a stage or at a conference or even just in a small church setting. And maybe you're already doing that, just ministering to young people and, and even older people like myself and saying, Hey, this is what we've done. And this is why God is, 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 um, is central to who we are. And it's just so, so cool to see you guys. And I'm excited like five years down the road or even just a couple of years to see where the Lord takes you both Certainly. and continues to give you a voice to share about, about who he is. So pretty cool to see. Yeah, one of the questions that Jordan asked us yesterday when we were sitting at the table was, um, where do you see yourselves in a year? And we both said the same thing. You know, we're going to see what God's plan is. Mm. We're going to yeah, see what God's plan is. That's the answer. But again, yeah. it's, 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 bigger than, it's bigger than broadcasting. It's bigger than a radio show. It's bigger than um, covering games for the New Orleans Pelicans. It's bigger. Like, his calling is, is, is something that... Um, I feel like we're preparing ourselves for every day, no matter what that looks like. So when he does come calling, whatever that calling looks like, we're ready. When we're in- yeah, he will direct your path, right? Amen. Proverbs 3, 6. Yeah, and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Well, Antonio Daniels, Sonia Daniels, thank you so much. You're both awesome and really appreciate you coming on. Antonio, great suggestion bringing your better half onto the conversation here. I'm just saying. Yes. Great suggestion, my friend. We'll have you guys back on again and just appreciate you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. 
And many thanks to Antonio Daniels and his wife, Sonia, for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. And certainly we wish them nothing but the best going forward. And it's a great time to be a sports fan. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball. You get all the golf going on. Uh, It's just awesome to be a fan right now. And uh, I love it. I love it. And you got, of course, the NFL with its mini camps and OTAs, and pretty soon the NFL season will be here come summertime. So just a great time to be a sports fan and a great time to potentially subscribe to the Sports Spectrum magazine if you haven't done that yet. If you're looking for faith-filled, family-friendly, clean content in the sports world, it's hard to find all of those together. Well, we got it with the Sports Spectrum magazine. It's been a big part of Sports Spectrum's ministry since 1985, and we continue to stand on the shoulders of those who launched this ministry many years ago in bringing you the Sports Spectrum Quarterly Magazine. You can subscribe right now over at sportspectrum.com. It's a quarterly magazine, as I mentioned. It's got devotionals in there from athletes. It's got great stories and articles that you can't find anywhere else, in-depth content, in-depth stories, all centered around bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. You can subscribe right now at sportspectrum.com. When you do that, make sure you use the exclusive code that we have for this podcast. Podcast15 is the code. Podcast15 and save 15% off a one-year subscription when you check out an order over at sportspectrum.com. Of course, we appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. Whatever app you're listening to this podcast on, make sure you click that subscribe or that follow button so that you don't miss any more episodes of Sports Spectrum's podcast. Maybe tell someone about our show. We appreciate all the support, being an ambassador for what we do here. Certainly, we want to point people to the one who holds the world in his hands, right? Our creator, Jesus, our creator, God. And uh, that's who we want to point to, point to a relationship with Christ. We're just using sports as a way to do that. So we appreciate you tuning in and we hope you'll join us next time for another conversation here on Sports Spectrum. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Hey, thanks for watching Sports Spectrum here on YouTube. You can click our next video or you can check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.